Good morning, everybody. My name is Antonio Romanucci. I'm an attorney at Romanucci and Blandin. I'd like to begin by thanking you all for being here, Reverend Paul Jakes, um, all the reverends and ministers who are here. Um, I am honored to be a representative for this community in this, what I believe to be significant uh, and uh, once again, landmark litigation in the city of Chicago. This lawsuit is about correcting wrongs. We have come to know that Chicago has a serious problem when it comes to not only policing, but also to crime. Those two characteristics go absolutely 100% hand in hand together. How the community is treated is a reaction to what goes on in our community, and that is there is a tremendous and deep sense of mistrust Recently, we've learned that in a four-month period in the city of Chicago, there were 250,000 people, that's a quarter of a million stop and frisks in merely four months. We extrapolate that out to a year, that's a million people who were stopped on a, on a, on a, on a yearly basis by the Chicago Police Department. To put that into perspective, that means that one out of three citizens in this city, the person to my right, the person to my left, one of us has a chance of getting stopped. If he doesn't get stopped, or if this gentleman doesn't get stopped, that means the person to that over there to my near left will get stopped twice. Those are the statistics that are appalling. This stop and frisk policy was born out of a policing that is not correct. It's unconstitutional, it's illegal, and it's improper. Other cities across this country have brought similar lawsuits and have had good results. What I mean by good results are that stop and frisk has been brought down to a level that is consistent with the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment of our Constitution and Title VI, which eliminates and talks about non-discriminatory practices. The problem with 250,000 stop and frisks in the city of Chicago is that it unfairly targets and especially one racial group, and that's African Americans. 72% of those stops that were made in the city of Chicago were against people of color. The racial makeup in the city of Chicago of African Americans is not 72%. It's barely 30%. It unfairly targets young black males. I can tell you that this law firm knows firsthand what it means to be standing while black or even driving while black. With the recent case of Ricky Williams against Commander Evans, which you're all familiar with, or a while ago, the tragic shooting of Freddie Wilson just a few blocks from here because he was driving while black. These stops, these what are called Terry stops, it was a landmark Supreme Court case 50 years ago, which is still the law of this land. A Terry stop, a police officer may stop an individual if they have a reasonable, articulable suspicion of either criminal activity or that a crime has been committed. However, these Terry stops are being done under different auspice. They're done because people believe, the police believe that people are being disorderly or that they are gang loitering. And those are inappropriate substitutes for what our Supreme Court has said is a proper Terry stop. So instead, the police are catching bad guys by making indiscriminate, racially motivated and targeted stops searching for God only knows what, weapons, guns, expired driver's licenses, and that's how the police think that they can keep crime down. But instead, what it does, it creates an unholy butterfly effect. One stop after another continuously creates such deep mistrust and hatred amongst the community towards the police that we see these uprisings as they take place. 
So this lawsuit is a lawsuit that takes direct aim at stopping unconstitutional practices. We are seeking court intervention for, uh, let me repeat that, we are seeking court intervention, asking the courts and even the mayor of this city and of course our superintendent to enjoin the police department from indiscriminate, racially motivated stop and frisks. We want them to follow the Supreme Court rule. We want them to follow the Fourth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment. We do not want racially motivated stops. It is not illegal to wait for a bus at a bus stop. It is not illegal to drive while you're black. It is not illegal to be in a park with your friends. That does not automa automatically make you into a gang. Now, we do have uh, what I think is almost a classic, classic uh, video evidence of what a stop and frisk looks like. Uh, one of our uh, victims is here today, and he installed on his own a security system um, to his house, and he was waiting one night for a food delivery. So he was in front of his home, obviously standing there, waiting for the food delivery driver to appear. The food delivery driver did appear, and when the police drove by and saw the exchange, of money, of course, they assumed that is a crime, that is illegal, and we are going to stop that. And it's caught on video. And you're gonna have that video made available to you upon request. You just see Carolyn or Stephanie, they'll be happy to do that. And sure enough, two undercover police officers show up, they stop their squad, they get out. <laughs> you could see Darnell saying, what did I do? and they, start, they, they stop him, and in the technical sense, they start frisking him, they remove all the items from his clothes, and they throw him indiscriminately to the ground later on for him to go scramble and pick up. When they realize, oh, it really is food in that bag, um, they let him go. So, you know, the question that you may have is, um, Attorney Romanucci, what is the harm in that? That is, that is good policing. That, that's, police officers have to rely on their hunches, don't they? Well, yes, we want a good police officer with good instincts, and if you want to call it a good hunch, but a hunch must be exercised within the limits of the law. And when it's not, it becomes illegal, it becomes unconstitutional, and it breeds contempt, and we are here to stop that and it is my prediction that once the community sees that the police is serious about how respectful they are to them, I promise you that there will be an equal amount of respect back to the police and we will see these unnecessary shootings, these unnecessary murders, lives being taken, people being hurt and paralyzed and never again to be with their families as they once knew we will see that decrease. It's happened in other cities. New York is a beautiful example of, of a city that entered into a consent decree when they realized that, they, that their officers were performing unconstitutionally. Seattle has entered into a consent decree. Philadelphia has. Boston is part of a DOJ investigation. Interestingly, New Jersey also is under Department of Justice investigation, as we already told you New York is, and those are both cities where our Superintendent McCarthy has come from. And our number of stop and frisks, according to the ACLU report, because we have to be very thankful for what the ACLU has done here, our number of stop and frisks has nearly doubled since this administration has taken over. Don't take that as a coincidence. That's reality. Stop and frisk was born. The policy of policing stop and frisking in high numbers was born somewhere else, and it was brought to this city 
hoping that it would do something, and it hasn't. Because the measurable statistics, whatever statistics the Chicago Police Department does keep, and the ones that it wants to disclose truthfully, show that stop and frisk does not decrease crime. So we're hoping that this lawsuit will be a major step towards doing that, towards healing, towards respect, and towards dignity for this community and also for the city. It's a two-way street. I'm not looking at this as only a one-way.